Hey everyone, Justin here. Today I'm going to show you how to use one of these two button gaming keyboards to make it so that you never miss another Zwift power up or trainer road interval change ever again. A couple weeks ago, I was watching Cameron Jeffers, who's a sprinter on Zwift, and he missed a power up at the end of his race, which probably cost him the sprint win. It got me thinking. There's got to be a better way. So I did a little bit of research and I stumbled on these. And these are two button gaming keyboards. They seem to be for actually a very specific game, but there's a way to reprogram these and use these for any key you want. So we've now got two keys that we can program. And that's awesome in Zwift because we can make these power up keys or ride on keys or turn around keys or left right keys, anything you can think of in two keys we can do that. And if you're using trainer road, which is something that I use more often, uh, you can also use these as up and down keys. So you can adjust the interval on the fly, just up or down just that easily. So let's go ahead and get this connected and we'll hop into the computer and I'll show you how to reprogram this for the buttons that we need. There's more detailed instructions in the description below. If that's your thing, cause we're doing a little bit of programming, but you don't need to know any code. I'm going to walk you right through it. Okay, so I've got this connected to my computer and the first thing we're going to need to do is download an app called Termite. So you want to download the app, open it from within the same directory so it's got the configuration file in that same folder and go ahead and open it with this connected. And what you're going to do is you're going to be presented with this screen and it says press zero to enter the serial remapper. So in this tiny little field at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and hit zero and hit enter. And it's going to show us a bunch of options. And one thing I'll tell you about termite, it's not really clear at all, but you're probably not going to be able to mess this up. So don't stress too much. Just follow along. So essentially there's two buttons on here, obviously two keys. The first key that we enter into termite, at least on mine is this one, the one closest to you. And the other one is the farthest one away. So the second key we enter. So let's say we want both of these to be the space bar. Like this is just a, uh, a power up, hitter essentially. So we've got our serial remapper open. All we have to do is hit space and then hit enter. And it's going to show us a space and then a comma. And that's showing us that we've applied it to the first key. And then we're going to go ahead and hit space and enter again. It's going to apply the second key and it's going to say mapping saved exiting. And what that's done is it's made the space bar map to both of these keys. And you can see we now have space bar just that easily. So if all you want is a space bar, we're done. You can move right into Zwift right now. The cool thing is these buttons are persistent. So Mac users, if you make these changes on a Windows computer and then take this to your Mac, it will work on your Mac. I have a Mac as well. I've tested it. It works. All right, so let's go a step further and make this a little cooler. Uh, so it says mapping saved exiting to re-enter press zero. So we're going to type zero again. Now we're back in our editor. So first off, I'm going to hit space and enter because I want that first one to activate my power up. But secondly, I want to do F3, which is ride on in Zwift. So Sam, a really friendly rider, love giving out those ride ons. Uh, you can see on termite, there's a list of like function and option keys. These are a little more difficult to install, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So you can't just type F3 and then hit enter. You actually have to find F3 or whichever key you're looking for in this list. And in my specific case, F3 it says F3 equals six. What I'm going to tell termite is I'm going to type in a colon to indicate that I'm doing one of these alternative keys. Then I'm going to hit six and hit enter. It now says F3 to let me know that I've applied F3, but we're not done yet. We now have to hit XX and then enter. And that tells Termite that I'm done with that key. So, so let's say you're in trainer road and you want one of your keys to be up and one of your keys to be down. I've hit zero, I'm back in my editor. Uh, so up it looks like is number 24. So I'm gonna do colon 24, enter. Then I'm gonna do XX to indicate that I'm done with that key. Now I'm going to do colon 25 for down, hit enter XX to let it know that I'm done with that key and I'm done. Uh, after you've made your changes, hit close using the close in termite. Once in a while I've had times where it doesn't apply. So I always like to unplug and then replug my keyboard back in just that easy. We now have a custom up and down key. The big takeaway is you're always just entering two keys and you're done. And if you're using any of these option keys, you're entering the code for the key, enter, XX, enter, and then you're moving on to the next key. So that's done. Let's go ahead and get this mounted on our bike. 
All right, so now that we've got this program, we need to mount it onto our bike. So I've got two ways for you to do it. One, you can use these Velcro straps. You can pick them up from the store, super cheap. I would suggest cutting this one a little bit narrower with some scissors and then looping it right through here and then Velcroing it onto your handlebars. That would work really well. That said, if you've got access to a 3D printer, check this out. This is a little Garmin or Wahoo mount. And it's essentially, what I've done is I've modified the 3D print file for this and it's available in the uh, description to download. And essentially it's gonna allow you to click this into your computer mount. So all you need to do is super glue or epoxy or even double stick tape this just onto the bottom of that. And then we can screw this into our computer mount and you're good to go just like you would use your computer when you're outdoors. So if you don't own a 3D printer yourself, you might wanna check some local schools or some local libraries. A lot of places have 3D printers now. This should be super easy to print, shouldn't cost you more than a few bucks, should print really, really quickly, like 30, 45 minutes or so. And then you'll have a pretty cool custom solution for your clicker. We're in Zwift. I've got mine set to power up and U-turn. Let's go ahead and give it a test. All right, so that's it. I hope you found that useful. That can be adapted for use in train roads, Zwift, any of your other apps, however you wanna use it. I think it works pretty well. If you wanna do any train road group workouts with me or some Zwift ride, the info's right there. You'll see me on. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.